Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to our usual Monday night shenanigannery. Uh, Hell's yeah. Much greetings. Most Hell's fizzle yeah. Full shizzle. Hell's yeah and abyss. Maybe. Um, because we are going to dive right in with some D&D homebrew. Now, there is a little, there's a little bit of a backstory to this involving the home game that I DM. Um... Because one of my players very recently met uh, a lovely, a lovely old woman by the name of the Archdevil Zario, the Angel of War, the General of Avernus, the Duke of the First Circle. Um, <laughs> Who would kick your arse first calling her an old woman. <laughs> I would kick my fucking cunt in <laughs> before setting me on fire. Uh, so he met her. And they got along swimmingly through strategic use of a cheese Danish. Um, and I will not elaborate further. Uh, and so he's thinking of maybe taking a couple of levels in Cleric. Um, but we realize that there is no, like, infernal Cleric. Like, evil Clerics are easy. You can play mo pretty much any domain uh, for cleric as easy uh, as evil particularly things like death grave I would argue maybe arcana knowledge would fit fairly and war would fit fairly well into it but those are all to do with gods and str strictly speaking a cleric gets their power from the divine and if you're looking for something more fiendish you're usually a warlock um, we decided to say, fuck all that. Um, some of the devils and demons that we have around are basically gods anyway. So, yeah. like, I'm sorry, you go down to the Ninth Circle and tell Asmodeus he's not a god. Uh, and see I how mean, he would agree can. with you, but he'd still kill you. He'd still kill you. Uh, yeah. But you go down there and say, hey, buddy, you want a cleric? Eh. That's exciting. Hmm. But at the same time, and at the same time, I'm sure that entities like the Demogorgon and Orcus would appreciate it. Well, maybe not appreciate a cult, but um, bestow random blessings upon a cult to encourage destruction. We've all seen it. So and then be eaten. And then be eaten, or yeah. maybe, or made into zombies, depending on who it is. Cults love being eaten. Yeah, like, you just, all you gotta do is wait for the one cult that decides that the best thing in the world, the one thing they absolutely want to do above all else, is summon Yanogu. And every single one of them will get eaten and turned into hyenas and eaten again. Immediately. <laughs> and you know Yanogu's, you know good. Anyway, um, <laughs> we decided that we were gonna. We decided that we were gonna do an infernal cleric. Um, I might need to work on the name, but because uh, you know, infernal is technically to do with the hells. Um, because because the indie has co-opted a lot of the good words for it. Uh, mm. But um, but yes, this is a cleric who is. Of devils and of demons and does all of that good shit. Uh, so yeah, um, if you ever wanted to be a, uh, a cleric and set things on fire and think that the light domain is for sissies, then this is your this is going to be your out. Uh, also, the light domain is not for sissies. The light domain is fucking terrifying. Light domain clerics are fucking terrifying. <laughs> and Quite not just right. Not just because they get fireball. Everybody loves fireball. Fireball. And if we do not give fireball as one of the spells here, I will riot. Um, that seems fair. That's a, that's, a, that's a solid, you know, a so, solid um, ground rule. Clerics, in the proper rules, because um, this, this is the this is the one thing, everything else I can kind of go, eh, about, but this is the one thing that I fucking hate about the new player's handbook and that's that every single subclass every single class chooses its subclass at third level now which makes piss all sense 
for clerics, mm. warlocks, sorcerers, arguably wizards. No, not really arguably wizards. Um, and it's just like, so many of these classes, their flavor is derived from having their subclass at level one. Because you kind of need it. Cleric, like a cleric, not like paladins, should also definitely have their uh, oath at level one, but they're at level three in the 2014 rulebook. Um, yeah. But cleric just being like, oh, I'm big into a god, but I'm not really sure what domain of god. I just get little, I just get magic. Like you shouldn't be able to cast guiding bolt that easy. Like you shouldn't be able to do that. Anyway, um, so. Means that clerics have a lot at level one. We've got some proficiencies, we've got an ability, and we've got a couple of spells to give them. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, the fun thing with clerics is that they have a shitload of subclasses. I think cleric has maybe the most amount of subclasses in the entire game. Clerics are like wizards, isn't it? It's either clerics or wizards, and if it's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen for wizards. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen for clerics. It's Use four the other way around. It's fourteen for clerics without a plane shift, it's eighteen with. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a lot of gods in D&D. &D. They all do a lot of shit. Um, yeah. But yes, traditionally at this level, um, I, I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm thinking that a cleric that is big on devils and demons and yugoloths and things like that is probably going to be one of the more upfront clerics, you know? Mm. Like, this, this is a cleric who's going to be in there. I don't know. I'm like... You can go either way, because this is the thing. Well. What's the big difference between demons and devils? Law and chaos. Exactly. So, if you're worshipping a devil, which is what we're doing, isn't it? I mean, uh, this is coming off of somebody have... who wants to make a devil, but I was kind of thinking we could maybe try and do both. Uh, so, uh, do we want to stick to maybe. devils then? Because if we stick to devils, that will make it easier. I feel like that is a better thing to do, given that devils and demons fucking hate each other. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. You know. I let's stick with let's stick with devils. Does mean that I can call it the uh, the infernal domain cleric, which is good. Absolutely. But it also means that it's not necessarily an upfront bruiser. Well Because one yeah. of the key things that devils engage in is insidious subterfuge, deception, and deceit. See, you're saying that, and my mind is just full of cambians with big flaming swords. Uh, but you are right. You are right. Mm. So, so yeah. So we can we can play around with this a little bit. We can see kind of what we feel like. So yeah, normally uh, a cleric would get if they're getting a bonus proficiency or something they would get they can get tools they can get like a skill or the most common one i think is heavy armor because they already get mm. they already get medium armor proficient yeah they already get medium armor proficiency yeah um so yeah uh but also maybe there could be a um we can maybe give them a bonus cantrip that could be fun uh, I'm just trying to think. Of, I'm trying to see how many others get bonus cantrips because it might just it might just be that light is an outlier. Um. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think light is light is an outlier. Fair. Um, in that one. So never mind. Sag. Also, I love the fact that there is such a thing as a zeal domain cleric. He's <laughs> like, what do you believe in? <laughs> Believing really hard. From a monk at Plane Shift Articles, which I... Yep. Yeah, because that's, um... Oh, pardon me. That playtest material. 
Not technically, I think. I think it was like an official little booklet. Okay. Um, it's not. It's not on Earth Arcana, uh, but it is like. No, because fate yeah. is apparently on Earth Arcana. Yeah, it's one of these things that exists as a. Um, uh, I, I, like it's hey, this is locked to the plane. Like artificers used to be locked to Eberron. Right. Um, unless you want to homebrew it, in which case, fuck it, do what you fucking want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, let's get us a. Let's also get us the. Let's get, I'm just gonna get the master list of spells up. Um, because we gonna need it. Uh, although I, I yeah. although I do know one of the spells that we are absolutely getting for first level. Not fireball. No, no, no. The fire lo- fireball's at third level, um, or fifth level. Sorry. Uh, hellish rebuke. We're absolutely getting hellish rebuke at this level. A hundred percent. Come on. You can- given that tieflings get it as a racial feat, you're like you, you can't not have it for devils. I mean, yeah, like. So, uh, we're looking at a skill, we could do it, well, hang on, okay. So we're thinking devils, we're thinking insidious, uh, insidious kind of deals. Should we give them proficiency in deception and persuasion? That would be really lovely. Yeah. That, I think, would be very nice. Because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of skill proficiencies are going around. For example, uh, if you're not getting martial weapons or heavy armor, you tend to get, uh, I think we're going to be able to do one proficiency. Well, yeah. So well, deception because a few or... get um, Yeah, I'm just like Well, so for instance, um yeah. no, I think we could give two. Because for instance, so Arcana clerics just since I'm at the start of the list get a feat. What? They get a feat. Arcana don't they? clerics do not get a feat. Oh my no, god, they, they basically get magic initiate. Yeah, they basically get magic initiate. Two cantrips, a wizard spell, and and no, proficiency no, it's just, in arcana. It's just the cantrips. They, they don't get a wizard spell. You gain two cantrips of your choice. Oh, from the wizard spell list. Sorry. That, was about, that would be fucking mental. Yeah, I was kind of looking at it and being like, that's insane. In fact, also, then, next even down, death domain, you get a proficiency. Well, you get a weapon proficiency, sorry. Yeah. Um, And you get um, a necromancy cantrip from any spell list. Yeah, because I was thinking maybe a ch- like you could give them a choice, um, but uh, that could be cool. Yeah, because for a example, choice between intimidation and persuasion, persuasion and deception. I'm, d- I'm fair. Because for example, the peace domain, uh, when you choose this domain at first level, you gain proficiency in the insight, performance, or persuasion skill of your choice. Fair. So we could g- we can I mean, give them a choice think... uh, and be like, hey, you can you can have one of these. Lots of these, though, are very much like two things at first level. So yeah. we could potentially do like a, like a spell and a proficiency would be very much within the realm of. Well, so well, if you. What, well, you, like, no, they all get spells anyway. They all, yeah, they all get, get spells as like an expanded spell list. But I think yeah. only two of them get like bonus counter things light and grave domain. Because I think grave domain gets spare the dying for free. They do. Yeah. But Forge Domain gets, Forge Domain gets uh, proficiency and skill. That is true. So, yeah, should we... Fuck it. Like, the only no. one I think that does two skills is Knowledge Domain. Um, uh, Death Domain is, is like, proficiency and spell. What does Death Domain get? Uh, any necromancy cantrip. Oh, dang. All right, then let's have a look at spells. Um, should we get... Do we have... Is there a particularly infernal spell that we can think of? <gasps> Control Flames. Well, if we're talking cantrips... Yeah, because it would be a cantrip. Yeah. <laughs> should, we, should we give them Eldritch Blast? <laughs> no, we're not giving them Eldritch that Blast. That would be... That would be such a uh, that would dick be, move. It would, it would be such a dick move. Uh, um, I don't know what, aside from Firebolt, I don't know what counts as... Yeah, I don't know what counts as like a, a kind of an infernal cantrip, really. Closest thing really would be thaumaturgy because that's what tieflings get. Not to tar the tieflings with it, but yeah. But yeah. Um. Uh. 
True Strike this is like, because it's the fucking devil. Uh, I d I'm no, not no, sure. No, I no, think no, the no, thing no. with spells is it's easier for something like Grave Domain or Death Domain because they just go necromancy. Yeah. Um, and life domain again, you know, just goes. What kind of div? You know, you, or like you can look at divination spells. You can look like you can look at yeah. schools at that point. I mean, it would need to be an evocation cantrip yeah. because we're like we killing people. Here's the thing: is clerics don't get firebolt. Well, then we could definitely do firebolt. Yeah, firebolt is artificer, sorcerer, and wizard, and that's a really solid attack option for a cleric to have. Yeah. Like, Firebolt is the second best damaging cantrip. Yeah. What's the first one again? It's Eldritch Blast. Yeah, fair. Because you get the more beams, which means you get more chances to actually hit, and force damage is kind of better than fire, because less things have resistance to it. This is true. This is true. So, yeah. So, bonus cantrip and proficiencies? I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. It means we don't have to put in an ability. It means we don't have to. Well, we do also have to put in an ability. Soon. This is also we also get an ability at first level. All of these get a bonus. They get bonus cantrips. They get a couple of spells, and they get an ability at first level. No, they don't. At all some yes, of them they... get a spell or an ability. That's that's what I'm talking about. Oh, some of them do like proficiency mean... in spell. Some right. do proficiency in ability. Okay, what do you mean by ability? So, for instance, Order Cleric, Voice of Authority. Yeah, like all of them get... All of them get that. All of them get another first level of, a thing at first level. Okay, some of them get... Some of them get proficiency and bonus cantrip from someone else's book. Yeah. But they some also of them get... No, and they don't get an ability on top of that. There is not a single cleric I can see here. Okay, the only cleric I can see here that doesn't get another first level ability is, Arca is Arcane Cleric. Uh, Everything. Or Tempest, Death, War, and Grave. Zeal, Forge, Light, Order, all get... So things. you've just named a bunch that don't get bonus cantrips. Light gets a bonus cantrip. Yeah. Uh, Grave gets... But it, no, they, Grave gets doesn't an extra get proficiency. Ability. Grave gets an extra ability. No. Eyes of the Grave, at first level, you gain the ability to occasionally sense the presence yeah. of the undead. And it doesn't get a proficiency. Right, okay, so now I'm seeing what you're talking See? about. See? Right, okay. I was getting yeah. confused. This wasn't making you can sense. Have a profi you can have a proficiency and a cantrip, or you can have a proficiency and ability, or you can have a cantrip and an ability. You cannot have all three. Should we just go for the proficiencies then, because the cantrip was giving us trouble? Well, what's the ability you want? Well, we're going to get to that. Do you have something in your brain? No. Like, what What do you think would be a but good... But you'd rather have an ability than a cantrip. It's more interesting, usually. Proficiency. Fair. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Because yeah. I feel like we started on different pages here. We very much did. Because, like, every cleric gets a first level ability. And a couple of proficiencies. Some of them get a cantrip instead of those proficiencies. Or instead of the ability. Right. I.e. death. Death. You gain proficient you get proficiency with martial weapons and you get your first level. Your ability is that you get your uh cantrip and that your cantrip does more. Yeah. None of the others do that. What was Arcanus? Arcana, uh, Arcana is you get the two, oh, yeah. you get the two cantrips and proficiency in the Arcana skill. Yeah. So Arcana and Death are it. They are the only ones, and they kind of have an ability. Eh, okay, Arcana doesn't, but Death has an ability kind of wrapped into it. Where it's like you get the Necromancy cantrip, and you can do a funky thing with it. You basically get Twin Spell. To be fair, that because Arcana gets two cantrips. Arcana does get two cantrips. Which is much. So that's 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 There's the two cantrips and the proficiency. Is, yeah, whereas this is you get proficiency and you get one cantrip, that cantrip is bitching. Yeah. So okay, so yeah, so it's like we could take a souped up cantrip. Or we could put in a second cantrip for shits and fucks. No, because we were having enough trouble trying to come up with a cantrip that wasn't firebolt. 
Fair. You want to do two proficiencies in ability? Yeah, I mean, giving them deception and persuasion, because you were talking about the... Yeah, let's give them the, let's give them the proficiencies in deception and persuasion. Yeah, I think that was that was a solid opening idea. <laughs> We've been arguing for 20 minutes just to come up with the same fucking idea. Teamwork. <laughs> and we're so good at this skills. right shall we do the spells first before we get on to what the ability should be sure right Hell's now, Rebuke is one of them are we pulling these we're pulling these from any it's been a while since we've done a number list. so the expanded spell yeah. list we pull them from any spell list we like okay uh, so, one of them is and they're all first level spells they are. We're doing first level spells first, and then it's second, third, fourth, and fifth. At the very So what best. what are our what are our infernal um first level spells? Well we've got our hellish rebuke. Hellish hellish is a first level spell. Yeah, hellish rebuke is a first level spell. We could do burning hands. Burning hands might be a good one. Um Yeah. Arm, we could do Armor of Agathis, because that is named after... A, I think that is named after a place in the Hells. I, I was thinking maybe something more like Hex. Uh, which would be a bit different. I mean, Hex Armor of Agathis, sure, but I feel like we're going very fiery. We are going quite fiery. Hex would be cool, though. A cleric with Hex could mm. be fun. Absolutely. Um... I'm just trying to think what else would be a good idea. I mean, Bane was the one that kind of jumped into my head, but that was kind of like a if we can't think of anything. That's he... Bane's already a cleric. Is Bane spell. a first level? Yeah, Bane's a first level That's spell. Fair. It's just the anti bless. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, it's good. Nice. Um, um, I am going to have a quick liking, shifty. I am liking your idea of Hex, though. Yeah, it feels fun. Yeah. I am going to have a wee shifty at um, at Infernal Warlo Warlocks. Yeah, see what see what Fiendlocks get. Yeah. Because Warlocks don't necessarily get an expanded spell list. No. Which I think sucks. Because Warlocks get so it few. Does. Warlocks get so few spells as it is. It's like... Argh. And also, there's so many warlock invocations that are just, you can cast this spell once with a warlock spell slot. It's like, motherfucker. But there are also some that are, you can cast this spell at will as much as you fucking there's like. There's so few of them. Admittedly, they're all brilliant. Yeah. I'm mm, like, Not my... true, actually. Not all of them are brilliant, but... No, but Minor Illusion, as much as you like, is great. Mm, silent Image, you mean. Yeah. Because minor, minor Illusion, you can already do as much as you like. It's a cantrip. A uh, cantrip? Yeah, Minor Illusion's a cantrip. Oh, well. Silent Image is the one uh, you're thinking of. Fair enough. Because that's All that's I know amazing. is that I spent my entire time with my warlock illusioning my own mask on. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Like, no one knew who I really was. Silent Image and Disguise Self for free are both insanely good. Yeah. But the one that lets you cast Jump for free can go fuck itself. <laughs> I mean, I just think just jump as a spell and jump mechanics in general are just what the fuck. Yeah, they need work. They really need work. Yeah. They... Um. But yeah. What does it? What does the fiend warlock look like? So, fiend warlock, you're looking at burning hands, command, blindness, deafness, scorching ray, fireballs, thinking cloud, fire shield, wall of fire. It's very. It is very, very much fiery. Fun. Yeah. Um, you're looking at, um, you just so you... give yourself, um, bonus hit points, you can, um, you get Devil's Own Luck, Fiendish Resiliences, so. Or maybe want to lean, I think I maybe want to lean a little away from, like, total fire as a thing, if only because there okay. are two other clerics that are very <clears throat> fire-based. That is true. Because light and forge. What's the other one? Light and forge. Is life? Light's very. Light. Light's quite fire based. 
Like Fair enough. The, the light domain expanded spell list is Burning Hands, Fairy Fire, Flaming Sphere, Scorching Ray, Daylight, Fireball, Guardian of Faith, Wall of Fire, Flame Strike, and Scrying. Okay. It's well then, very fiery. <laughs> do we want to look at some particular devils? I think we can do. Th I think we can do that for some of the abilities. I like Hex as a thing because that kind of makes this bridge yeah. the gap between cleric and warlock. And I like. I like your idea of making them kind of giving you these insidious abilities, giving you some more like social stuff you can do. Yeah, and I think it's important that a cleric and a paladin are different. Clerics like, and paladins are very different, and I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, your paladin is absolutely down on the front line. Killing everything with a fiendish smite. But, you know, the cleric can be on the front line, but also has lots of other responsibilities. Yeah, like, this is this is the guy standing behind the conquest or vengeance paladin. Being like, Meh. Yeah. Uh, also, it is a rule, if you're going to play this class, you do have to work on your evil laugh. It is essential. Okay, even if you're playing a good aligned character, you have to work on your evil laugh. It's essential. I love the idea of playing this as a good aligned character. Yeah. He's like, come on, guys! <laughs> come on, guys! Let's all bask in the, in the ice of La Vistas. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Because there is, there is an archdevil, at least one archdevil, for every layer of the Nine Hells. One of, at least one of them has two, and I think there's another one that was like the one who ruled Avernus before Zariel. So I think there's 11 archdevils. So they're probably worth looking into. But I, I, I like Hex as your... Uh, as your extra spell. Yeah, it feels good. It feels yeah. good. Hex is... A nice sexy Hex. We like that. <laughs> we like a sexy Hex. We like a sexy Hex. Um, and also because, you know, it does help that this... Like, Hex is quite explicitly a curse. Mm. Like, remove curse covers it. Yeah. So, and I, you know, devils do that. Uh, that they do. Yeah, they do. Um, the most powerful archdevils were the Lords of the Nine. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's some Lord of the Rings looking ass shit. Oh, yeah, like the, the archdevils of of Bator are mental. Yep. There is there is at yeah. least one devil that is pretty you look at it and you go, that's a Balrog. Like that's I just mean, a fucking Balrog. You fought one. Surprising. You fought the Balor. Oh yeah, we did! Yeah, oh, remember cool. you you know uh you know you went to you went to Hell's HR department? Yes, yes we did. And then I was a goat. Yeah and then you turned into a goat. It was a whole thing. Um they beheld a goat. They beheld a goat. <laughs> um, Balzebub, which I'm you know, presuming is, you know, copyrighted Beelzebub. Beelzebub. Balzebub. Balzebub. <laughs> hey, Dis you're a Dis Dispater. 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 I believe it's pronounced. Asmodeus. Don't fuck the with. The snake. Oh, uh, do not fuck Levistus. with. Yep. Up to his nipsy nice. Up the Bell Belial. It's just this bell here. <laughs> I like to think that she married a beast and became an archdevil. <laughs> it's like, well, I've married a beast and I have I have cons I have made France more tolerant. Time to go to hell. Uh I have consorted I have consorted with ungodly forces and now I shall bring violence upon the village that persecuted me. Hey Chris. Chris. <laughs> While singing with the animals. Hey Chris, new Beauty and the Beast fan fiction where <laughs> Belle decides to go to hell and reign over it as the Archdevil Supreme and the Beast becomes the Doomslayer. <laughs> I mean I, I would do love fucking that. I would read that book. I'd play that game. I would I, I yeah. I mean that's it's um what was the the Alice, what were those Alice, Alice Wonderland Madness, games? Yeah, the, the American McGee's Alice. Yes, that, but Beauty and the Beast would be Pete. With doom. And she married, yeah, <laughs> and she becomes one of the nine archdevils of hell. Yeah! Who else have we got? We've got Malagard. 
who was like, I, I guard Malaga. <laughs> I mean, if there is any place that is abandoned to the hells, it's there. We have Fierna. Uh -huh. uh. Fierna's the wife of Belial. Oh, cute! And the daughter so, of Asmodeus, I believe. That's, that's starting to sound a bit incesty. Yeah. Um, as far as, I think... I don't remember have, fully. But, um, I think she tried to overthrow Asmodeus and he went, fucking get back down there. Uh, I mean, and, then, I, and then she went, alright, I'm going to overthrow Balliol. But also, come here, big boy. I mean, I just quite like that the next one is Molochroth. Brackets. Mephistopheles. Oh, Mephistopheles, yeah, the, the the hoarder. But he's not Mephistopheles. I've only ever heard he's him. He's Molochroth. I've only ever heard him referred to as Mephistopheles. Yeah, but he's Molochroth. <laughs> no, he's not. Apparently <laughs> Paul Blart, Molochroth. <laughs> You're like, oh, Mephi! It's like, it's Molly. <laughs> Respect trans um, demons. Respect trans devils. Fuck right. I'm going to write um, a book about and, that. Uh, and Mammon. And Mammon. Mammon. Big fat Mammon. merchant devil. Delightful. That's my Mammon. <laughs> <laughs> life sometimes life gives you mammons. Make <laughs> <mammonate>. <laughs> when life gives you mammons, make mammonate. <laughs> <laughs> and for that reason, we should get the aid spell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, literally, God. mammons aid. <laughs> Tell you what, since we're, sort of our premise was that <laughs> the arch devils are basically gods. Should we maybe make them pick an arch devil and get a little bonus thing? Like with the, the giant soul sorcerer where you pick a kind of giant and it gets you a thing. That could be very cool. That's also a shitload of work for us because that will probably reflect, that'll probably feature in like two abilities. I mean, I think it's the kind of thing that actually, so for instance, if we look at um, the giant soul sorcerer, mm. um, it's most prominent in their choice of spell list. Yes, so we could just do it for the spell lists. I mean... And then keep devilish abilities. Right, let's see how the... Let's see how it's, it's laid out. Uh, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, sorcerer, giant soul. By the way, if you've never... If you've never read the Iron Earth Arcana for the giant soul, it's really fun! It's really fun. It it's is. also the best way to go from being a goblin to suplexing the Tarask. I cannot stress it. how fucking stupid funny the giant soul sorcerer can be. It's so good. It's, it's so mental. good. Right, so. Um, okay, because this does this does things a little differently. It does. Okay, because sorcerers don't naturally get an expanded spell list. Because this only gets yeah. you spells at first and third level. Yes, so you only, yeah, right. you do only get two sets of new fancy spells. Okay. Um, huh. Oh, also... Yeah. Um, also, they only do... Like, having just... Six giants and there's yeah. ten. Yeah, there's... Yeah, there's six kinds of giants and there's know, ten. Jay. There's like eleven... The Arch Devils. Jay, yeah. There's so many more. Oh, you know what? Never I've mind. Just, Let's not do I've, that then. Yeah, I've, I've just scrolled through and um, Avernus has three. I was going to say, because you didn't mention Zariel. Yeah. So Avern that was just like, that was just the list of people in the picture at the top. Oh, in the Christ very Lord, Lord of the Rings cracker. picture. Yeah, no, no, no. There's three in Avernus. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in Dis. Oh, fuck off. Six in Minoris. Four, five, six in Phlegathos. Only four in Stygia. And two in Malbolg. Your Bolg was very bad. Malabol <laughs> it was a Malbolg. Malbolg. However, three, six. Bolg? Bolg, Italian. I mean. I'm assuming that it's not Italian anymore. <laughs> I don't really think that Virgil came down. We here. ain't in Rome no more. <laughs> hey, Toto, Sorry, Toto, we ain't in Rome think... no more. <laughs> hey, Dante, Dante, we ain't in Rome no more. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> Virgil would totally speak like that. Yep. Maladomini. As in, like, you were really bad at being in charge. The re- the realm of terrible, terrible bureaucrats and poor managers. I say, that's where shit dons go. Retail uh, hell! Ah, it's retail it's hell! retail hell. It's retail Yay. hell. Are you stopping? Maladomini has eight middle managers, oh, as any retail hell would. <laughs> I need to, I'm going to need to do an Avernus... I'm going to need to do a fucking Bator campaign, I'm going to... That could be quite funny, to be fair. I got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and Cania. Why is there a dog hell? I don't what? appreciate that. Oh, Cania. Yeah. Right. Led so by Asmodeus. So let's no, not... by Mephistopheles, sorry. Yeah, because I was going to say, it's like, there's only one at the bottom. Yeah, Asmodeus, Lord of the Ninth and King of the Hells. Asmodeus, the well, ultimate bottom. Indeed. <laughs> Yes, who apparently was in fact a deity in his own right. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like Asmodeus is kind of, if he wasn't so bloody mysterious, by which I mean nobody's written any lore for him. Um, I would say That's he's silly. the. I would say he's the Lucifer of this. Uh, of this pantheon, if <laughs> Zariel didn't map more closely onto Lucifer. Yeah. Lord the, of the first and commander shit? of the diabolical armies in the Blood War. Fallen Angel. Fallen Angel yeah. and do not fuck with under any circumstances. Absolutely. <laughs> she, and also, she's probably the weakest out of the lot of them. Isn't it crazy? Oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. so we're not going to do a changed spell list for every Archdevil because fuck that. No. Uh, Although, you... if you did it just for the nine, it'd be one per hell, but let's not do it. Yeah. Uh, we might do that as like a, as like the 17th level ability, where you can do one ability for each for each layer. That would be cool as fuck. Yeah, right, the abilities okay. go from first, second, sixth, eighth, and 17th. Ah. And at 17th level, you're casting 9th level spells. Go nuts. Yeah. So, first level. What do we? What kind of thing do we want to do? Do we want to do... We're, we're established that this is not a frontline combatant. So, no. I think we want to do maybe some debilitating stuff, uh, like debuffing your enemies, uh, or you've got an evil smile on your face. We could model him after the late, great Reverend Ian Paisley. Quite literally, fire and brimstone. Yeah, there will be weeping and wailing and, and gnashing, gnashing of teeth. And for those, and for without, those teeth, without teeth. Teeth, teeth shall, shall be, be provided. provided. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> uh, Absolutely, everybody uh, achieves an eating disorder. <laughs> fuck! Um, Bone rot. The teeth fall out their head. Tell you what, we can call it. Yeah, we can call it weeping and wailing, and we can give it like um, like a long range kind of um, mess with people thing. We've already we've already got yeah, hex. Cool. Yeah. So. But this could be like a wide range ch- charisma save. Yeah. Wide range charisma save. Um, to like. Should we give you know, them a frighten? Should we give them a frighten? That would be great. Yeah. Let's give them yeah. a fucking frighten. Um, Absolutely. <gasps> Jay. What? We could make this ability a grower. We could start by making them frightened. Then we could make them fight each other while being frightened of you in later levels. I think what we can do is we could do... What we might do is we might do a little combination thing where we do Hmm. this, you give this, and we can get them to frighten people. And then we use the channel divinity, which are always really powerful. Well, okay. Are sometimes really powerful. But they yeah. should be, because you only get, like, two of them in a day. One of them at the start. You get one a day. You get one a day, and then I think at the end you've got three. It's... Honestly, I've looked it up. It's really unclear. For paladins, it's, like, one. That's your lot. Yeah. Uh, clerics do have a more defined thing. Um, yeah, by 18th level, I get three channel divinity. Because that's their 18th level ability, is getting three channel divinities. Paladin. That's alright. Yeah, cleric, because the ability kind of, it seems, just because the way the book's written, it originated in cleric and someone went, yeah, just copy-paste that over to paladins and then didn't explain shit. 
Yeah, very get, annoying so, for paladins. It's very clearing. But it does mean that technically paladins only get to use a channel divinity once a day. They get multiple yeah, uses, that, like that, multiple different ways of using it, but they can only do it once per long or short rest. That's the thing. Is clerics get one channel divinity option, but they can use it more. I personally like to homebrew it so that paladins can use each of their abilities once. I think that's fairer. nicer. And also, yeah. that's kind of how you can read the rules. Yeah. It's weird. It's Paladins just... are badly worded. But yeah. fix. But turning smite into a spell was not the way to fix them. Let's not go off on this high horse today, Jonathan. We have not the time. Paladins already got a high horse. Well, apparently they have only a high horse. Apparently. It's a shit horse yeah. now. <laughs> it's a shit I'm horse. I'm so annoyed that they... Like, Fine Steed is a really fun spell, and they just made it generic as shit. They did. But you know what that means now, Jay? It means that your Cavalry Warhorse has the same stats as if you summoned a, a Golgothan horse. A literal shit, shit horse. horse. I'm going to do that. I'm going to play the new Paladin. I'm going to summon a shit horse. Because <laughs> <laughs> fuck yous all. Uh, <laughs> Right, uh, so, are we, are we thinking make somebody scared? Because it's a first level ability, I don't think we should do an AoE fear. No, um, yeah, that would probably be a bit much. Yeah. So yeah, let's do, let's do, yeah, um, First level, I... you can put the fear of the nine hells into someone. I should capitalize nine hells. Um, make it a reaction. Okay. As a partly because yeah, by partly what? because I'm gonna say that if somebody attacks you, then in the same way as hellish rebuke, like yeah, you know <laughs> this is like so you're thinking this is basically the cleric is standing there, someone's swinging the sword down, they're just turning them and go, you oh. don't want to do this. <laughs> 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 yeah, look, basically fuck yeah yeah uh, I like that yeah so uh, then they run the fuck away um I'm gonna be generous with this I'm gonna say I want a creature within 60 feet yeah uh cause that covers if anyone tries to shoot you as well yes it does which is good uh as a reaction when a creature within 60 feet attacks you uh you can force them to them to make a charisma charisma save uh, yeah or be frightened of you for now we could we could do it as a minute and make it limited use or we can give it multi-use and be like until the end of their next turn because it's already I quite, like it's already quite limited by it being a reaction so i'm I'm not necessarily feeling that we should limit it too much in terms of uses. Sure. Because, yeah. Because you're already training up your reaction for this instead of, for example, Hellish Rebuke, which you have. However, you have also just given this in as an ability. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yes, yeah, so that's what we're talking about, a uh, number of uses. Sorry, yeah. right, I just caught up. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, uses for this are... Right, let's... You know what? There is actually a comparable thing. Cause the light domain cleric. Warding you know, flare. Warding flare. You get use of that equal. Cause that yeah, when a creature you're attacked by a creature. Equal to your feet, wisdom modifier. Yeah, you impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Um, yeah. By basically flashbanging them. Which is pretty good. <laughs> I love I love that the light domain cleric is just flashbang. Um. <laughs> I mean, it's a solid strategy. So um. Up to your wisdom modifier, how long should they be frightened for? So use is up to your... Um, yeah. I mean, the fear spell normally lasts for what? A minute? I think it's a minute, but that's a third level spell. Mm, okay, well then, say to the end of their next turn. Cool. Uh, at least, uh, So they at least, you know, will definitely spend a turn running the fuck away from you. Well, that's the thing is, they don't have to run away from you with fear, but they, do, they just can't get any closer, and they have disadvantage on fucking everything when they can see you. And honestly, yeah. this ability is kind of set up so that they're going to be able to see you. Yeah. So yeah, this is already... They just attacked yeah. you. Uh, 
Pretty good. Equal to your wisdom modifier. And gain all uses on a short rest. Um, long rest. That's what it is for the Lightning light domain one. Then we'll do long rest. Um, yeah. Uh, friend of you till the end of their next turn. Uh, and I am going to call this Weeping and Wailing. Excellent. Very happy. Uh, Channel Divinity. Gnashing of teeth. Um, so, Channel Divinity. I think Channel Divinity, because mm. you said make them scared and then make them fight each other. Yeah. Uh, Channel Divinity, I think we can force a frightened creature to move up to its movement and make an attack against the creature you designate? Sure. Limits us a little bit if it's exclusively on frightened creature. But well, we do, we yeah. would then obviously put fear in as a third level spell. Yeah, we'll, we'll take fear as a third level spell. Um, and also, yeah. we've, we've just given ourselves an ability that will in fear people. Yeah, this is true. So it does give you immediate combo, yeah. which is, you know, right. solid. Um, but yeah, let's look at some of the other channel divinities, because like, Light Domain gets a big 30-foot 2d10 plus cleric level damage and dispels magical darkness. Yeah. War Domain gets to add plus 10 to an attack. Yeah. Uh, which is after big. they make the attack roll. Which is insane. Mm. Tempest, of course, get max out thunder. Max damage. Like, yeah. So actually, yeah, I think we need to make this. Mental. I think we need to make this more powerful. <laughs> hmm. Just having someone sprint up and attack someone else can one be really can be really bad if there's nobody else within range. Yeah. And two, it's one attack. Yeah. So what we maybe do as a thing, I um, when they attack. No matter if they hit or miss, the frightened creature also takes all the damage from the attack. Like, they both take the damage. That could be cool. Because that seems like a kind of, you know, devil's inciting madness kind of thing. Yeah. So we could do that. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, we could have them run at somebody and burst into flames. That would be really funny. <laughs> um, Channel Divinity creates suicide bomber. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, uh, I like maybe the idea that rather than it being uh, a one-off go fight them thing, you just, in the same way as if you like charmed someone or commanded someone and was like, go fight them. You know, it's like... You just make them see a creature of your choosing as their enemy. And make that an effect on that one guy that they then have to run and do. Okay. Um, but save him. And I think that's reasonable. Starting at second level, you can designate one frightened creature you can see. Um, yeah. That creature will then see one another creature that you choose as its enemy um, for the duration. Um, and prioritize and prioritize attacks attack against it. it. Yeah. So that's a, it's a little bit woo, but um, yeah. Second, second level. Um, you can compel the terrified into frenzied bloodlust um well that because yeah because actually you've already got the limit on it because it only affects frightened creatures yeah that's kind of why i'm thinking because mm. <clears throat> like there i don't think there are any abilities that are just like you are frightened no save yeah no there aren't so yeah. our ability doesn't have frightened no save the fear spell doesn't have frightened no save fucking dragon fear at least has us even has a saving throw yeah so you know what? So I'm like... Designate a frightened creature you can see. And also, you're only going to get to do this once. 
Yes, exactly. So it's got to be good. Yeah. <coughs> it's unfortunately <coughs> will not necessarily scale into later game stuff, which sucks a little. But because Frightened is one of those conditions that so many creatures in the late game have immunity to. Yeah, but which equally sucks. well, you find if you find someone who's not immune, yeah. then have a minion. you immediately... Yeah. You've got a and minion! And it'll scale with however strong said minion is. Yeah, maybe we can include a later thing that's like, hey, um, now your minion, affected by your channel divinity, gets like bonuses while... Thing. Because... And I've just, I, do, I actually have a basis for this, and it's not from anything else. Because FTL has a system where you can mind control somebody on the enemy ship, and the upgrades to that mind control is you give them extra health and make them do more damage. I mean, that's so like a that standard. That, yeah. That's a standard kind of like minion control thing. But I think that what might be better for us is if one of our very late level abilities, is we can overcome creatures' fear immunity. That would be that, a fucking great thing, actually. Yeah. Um, at 17th level, for instance? Maybe. Um, maybe. At 17th level, um, you can frighten creatures that are immune to being frightened. Plus, here's like an extra an ability for each layer of the of the hells. Yes. Because fuck <laughs> it. You can cast, like, fuck it. You can cast Earthquake now. Have fun. Absolutely. Um, we just get one, yeah, one free spell per hell. Pick a hell. Uh, you can see that creature will now see another creature uh, that you designate uh, as its mortal enemy uh, and will attack that creature before all others. Um, if the I'm gonna I'm gonna steal a little bit from Hex and Hunter's Mark here. And say, if the creature you designate yeah. to be hacked to pieces dies, you can shift that on as a bonus action. Well, because if the, if you have, as in like, as the, in you have your you have your minion and you have your minion's target. Yeah. If your minion's target dies, you can shift that target to another creature. Yeah, up and basically action. until the minion dies. Yeah, because that's the thing. Is like if your minion kills them, the fuck are they gonna do then? They're just standing there, back. Like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is the trick now. You're like, every single cleric that has this is going to run to the biggest dude in the room to try and get hit so they can do this. Well, that's the thing. is That ma that inherently makes this ability very dangerous to the self. And I think that balances it. Because if you're like, there's okay. an ogre there and we're surrounded by a bunch of goblins... I'm going to go and see if I can get the ogre to take a swing on me. Because here's the thing. Our frightened thing doesn't <laughs> negate the attack. No, it doesn't. It doesn't you negate. You're still getting attacked. smashed in the face. Potentially. Yeah, it's not a reaction. Because yeah, when you're attacked, it's not like not you're, you're imposing hit. disadvantage. You're taking the hit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm okay. It's when it, because we've written when it attacks you, not when it hits you with an attack. Um, Fair. So. <laughs> you have this, you have this option. <laughs> Yeah, you uh, may or may not get hit, but it uh, uh, you, it will be it will be afraid. It will regret. Designate uh, another creature uh, as a bonus action. Um, okay, I'm gonna balance this slightly. All right. Uh, at the end of each of the frightened creatures' turn, I think it should take. A D something of psychic damage. So, so that whatever happens, it just dies eventually. It just dies eventually. Yeah, D6. Um, yep. Of the frightened creatures turns, uh, it takes 1D6 of psychic damage. Uh, the effect also ends on them if they stop being frightened. That doesn't work because they're going to stop being frightened at the end of their turn. That's true, unless you use something like cause fear. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, um, 
I think we possibly so, balance this by maybe doing something less insane at sixth level because I'm not gonna lie, I'm looking at some of these sixth level abilities for clerics are fucking crazy. Clerics are really powerful, man. Yeah. Like, damn, who would play a wizard when you could do this? I mean, yeah, like, clerics are kind of my favorite spellcaster. Like, I've, tri solid, I've tried druid, I've tried a little bit of sorcerer, I've tried warlock, I've tried cleric. Cleric, by far, is my favorite mm. full caster. I, I do mean, still want to try wizard, though, because wizards, wizards can get insane because of some of the spells they get. Yeah. And I mean, I love warlock. Um, I've not done druids, I have to say. Um, and honestly, I feel like with our druid experience of our beloved Aster, um, you know, that's he. Alas, he was gone too soon. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm like, these six level abilities. So, for instance, we were talking about the light domain one, where you get to impose disadvantage as a reaction. Yeah, because this six gets levels to you can do it. You can then people. Yeah, you can do that for fucking anyone within yeah. thirty feet who gets attacked. Yeah, improved warding right. flare is really good. It's fucking great. It's been bloody useless um, to me in um, in Baldur's Gate, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So, just finishing the channel of divinity. Um, that creature will now see other creatures designated as mortal enemy and attack that uh, creature. The creature will remain. Arcana. The... You get like a free counter spell. Yeah, no, Arcana domain clerics are genuinely fucking terrifying. Um, the creature will remain in the state until it falls to zero hit points. Yeah. And then we include yeah. the then we include the d6 of psychic damage. Constantly. Yes. So the real yeah. trick, the real trick is somehow making a mind flayer fall for this. And good luck making a mind flayer fail a charisma save. I know, right? I know correctly, mm. those things have got really good bonuses. Anything that's got yeah, anything that's you... got resistance to psychic damage, chances are it's also got pretty fucking good charisma. But this is why, you know, you're aiming for the biggest, dumbest, ugliest motherfucker. Exactly! Get yourself a pet yeah. work. Um, yeah, you've never seen a troll with a high charisma save. Exactly. Um, I okay. I'm gonna include another caveat into the channel divinity just to just to make sure this doesn't end up like the Oathbreaker Paladin, where you can create an army of the dead. Well, you can't. You can only do it to one person. You can only do it to one person. But also, I just want to just want to do a thing and be like, the creature also cannot be healed. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's sensible. Because otherwise, that would be. <laughs> Imagine yeah. if you're there, and I'm just gonna heal my minion, heal my minion. I mean, admittedly, I think. <laughs> no word of a lie. I think that is the potential basis for a really fucking fun cleric, where it's based around calling up some divine entity and just boosting it. Like, I think that would be. Summoner like, cleric. I think that would be really cool. Um, however, I am loath to make any kind of summoner in D&D because they are a bitch to manage as a dungeon master. Yeah. Like the And I mean, that's why you don't like druids, basically. Well, it's not that I don't like druids because of that. It's but just that... How many ferrets? 32. How many giant weasels? 32. Um... <laughs> no, no. I, I really like druids and their flavor. It's My problem with druids genuinely is that a lot of their really cool spells are all concentration yes they kind of have to pick a thing and stick with it yeah. um and honestly clerics just have better spell lists they just you know, the, cleric spell list is the just best better the best thing for druids would be if they got heavy armor proficiency could you imagine that could you I don't imagine have to yeah you've read my the... wife played one i was gonna say you've read uh, his dark materials. You've seen what an armored bear looks like. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking baby. great. <laughs> Sky Iron. Now, what? Barry and I's very first D and D campaign. Uh, the DM gave Barry was playing a, a Circle of the Moon druid. DM gave her a, a set of wooden heavy armor that wild shaped with her, so that when her character became an elephant, it was an elephant with twenty AC. <laughs> That's fucking horrifying. It was hilarious! Now we know why Hannibal won. 
Yeah. So uh, big elephants. <laughs> what should we call this channel divinity before we jump up to the sixth level? Could still call it Nash Eighth. Yeah, fuck it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> the Reverend Ian Paisley great... would have a representation yeah. in Dungeons and fucking Dragons. We call him the Revenant Ian Paisley. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck whatever I'm doing next. That's the next villain in your fucking... Uh... <laughs> I'm actually going to write it down The now. Revenant <laughs> Ian Paisley. <laughs> Fuck. The Revenant right. Ian Paisley. I'm, fuck every every plan. I'm starting a new City of Mist campaign right now. We are having like, the villain is going to be the Revenant Ian Paisley. Oh, that's <laughs> and that's the thing is, I love it so much. He's just a dead guy whose mythos is Ian Paisley. He's just come back yep. from the dead. He's so angry. He's come back from the dead. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god, god, that's amazing. <laughs> I need to We're clip that. going to hell for this, brother. Oh, like we weren't already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my sweet Jesus. Oh. The, the annoying thing is that the 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 our viewers will only understand this <laughs> if they have a solid understanding of Scottish and Irish um, history. Yep. Specifically Irish, specifically Northern Irish history. Yeah. Oh, God. oh dear! Imagine if we ever developed an American audience; they would never understand us. I, I, I think if we developed a strong American audience, I would literally be spending the entire time just going, R "Run from your country, for the love of God!" Well, that's about that too. Mate, I mean, I kind of want to run from our country right now. So you before, know, no, no, move to no, mate. Before you jumped on the call, I was watching a legal, the latest legal, legal video, which is basically like, "Hey." Here's the white paper that the Republicans have put out. Oh yeah, he did one on them um, on Project Twenty Twenty Five. Yeah, it's which is fucking, fucking mental. <laughs> like I'm looking at it going, I'm sorry. When did the Republican Party let the Libertarians in? A long time <laughs> ago, shit? and now they want to step everything back to the eighties. Yeah. The eighteen eighties. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this is no, no, because they still want women to work. Because they want to be kept in luxury, but the women must be subservient. I don't know, man. I'm not sure they do. I'm not sure they want the women to work. I think they want them to work in the wash houses. Yeah. Cleaning their floors and servicing their beds. Marika. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Let's so, keep going. Sixth level of abil sixth level ability. Oh, yeah, we have to do that. We've got things like... Um, <laughs> Ignoring enemies, ignore necrotic. You ignore your enemies' necrotic resistance. Uh, oh, this um, fucking insane, huge, holy terrifying shit. ones. Holy shit! Yeah, like the grave domain can just cancel a crit. Yeah, which is crazy. That's mental. Forge gets plus one AC with heavy armor, which means at level six you probably have an AC of twenty one, yeah, and yeah. you get fire resistance. Which is like, how many classes give you a damage resistance? Not many. It's barbarian and ancient's paladin and late game monk. I think. Le no, I'm no, I'm making that up. I think. I think that's a. F I think one of the monk subclasses is like one of their late things gives you resistance to force damage, and that's it. Yeah, like Fuck it's not common. Good. Arcana. Uh, when you restore hit points to an ally with, an, uh, with a spell of first level or higher, you can also expend one spell slot. You can also end one spell of your choice on that creature. You can just get a free dispel magic. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Just go, boom, gone. The level of spell you, you end must be equal uh, or lower than the level of the spell you use to cast the healing. So if you cast Mass Healing Word, I'm like, hey, anything of third level or below, boom. Yeah. It's unfucking real and also says it's you can end one spell of your choice, not one effect on that creature, which means that if it's a spell acting on a bunch of creatures, that's killing that spell. Like fear, yeah. for example. Shitting yeah. blimey. It's a wizard killer. Peace. Ah, uh, we don't talk about <clears> that. It's either peace or order that's got the truly insane... No, no, no it's or it must be order I'm thinking of. Um... I mean... Oh, spine. Uh, nature... 
nature. What is nature? Um, yeah, I'm not nature. Is all. you could just give someone within thirty feet of you um, resistance to damage that they take. Nice. Yeah, that's just that's a and that's a reaction with no limit. As a reaction, when a creature within 30 feet of you takes acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage, have resistance. Peace gives you the ability to let any two members of your party do a Mr. President get down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, let me let me find this. Uh, beginning at 6th level, the Protective bond you forge bond. between people uh, helps them protect each other. When a creature affected by your emboldening bond feature is about to take damage, a second bonded creature within 30 feet of the first can use his reaction to teleport to an unoccupied space within 5 feet of the first creature. The second creature then takes all the damage instead. That is literally a Mr. President get down. It is actually. That's delightful. <laughs> oh my god. I love that. Uh, Tempest gets the- Tempest is probably somehow is the weakest of this. Because all you do is, well, like, you get to shove people around a bit. But it also has such a good channel divinity. It has an insane channel divinity. Like, could you imagine Thunderball, but everybody just gets thrown away? <laughs> like, that's pretty- I don't... That is actually pretty good Me... for force movement, and force movement's always powerful. Because that's a larger, smaller creature, yeah. and you can shove it ten feet. And that's, that's a large or smaller creature. That's fucking loads yeah, of stuff. That's only lightning. That's Personally, I would genuinely homebrew that to be lightning or thunder and be like, hey, you want to cast thunderclap and just get everyone the fuck away from you? That's amazing. No, Jay, when you cast, like, shatter. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody's allowed in. Um, or you can use lightning bolt to shove people off cliffs. Uh, War cleric gets an extra channel divinity. An extra channel divinity option. Um, Trickster gets ah, right. free invisibility. Zeal gets the deal thunder damage and you push people 10 feet away. Wild. That's, that's mental. Forge. Yeah, yeah Forge. <laughs> forge. I want to play a Forge cleric at some point because they are just mental. Like their final ability is immunity to fire and resistance yeah. to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing while you're wearing heavy armor. You are literally the dragon, the, the dwarf that killed Smoke. Yeah, it's that's, like, that's, I will, that's who you are. You just march up to the red dragon and put a <laughs> fucking maul through his face. Yep. Um, Mental. When you flare on another creature, order domain. Uh, if you cast a spell in the enchantment school, um, you can change the spell's casting time to a bonus action. Right, this, so we can kind of go ham on this. Yeah, we can. We can actually go we fucking. Go ham on this. So, what do we want <clears throat> to do? Because we're we seem to be building towards like a frightened cleric, mm. like uh, a frightened and control cleric. A frightened and control cleric. So let's maybe work a bit more of the control. Um, okay. Well, actually, there's something we need to do. For, so let's put that on the back burner now, because we do need to do sure. the third and fifth level spells first, as in. We do the spells indeed. you get at third level and at fifth level. So those would be second level and then third level spells, respectively. Okay. So second level spells. Um, uh, right. You did that talk about be... aid. Uh, man, man. I mean, that would be no, because it's already a cleric spell and it's like super basic. But yeah. it would be really funny. Um... Uh... <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, branding Smite? No. no it doesn't really um, fit our thing. doesn't really fit the no. mechanical thing, but I think it fits the flavor. Uh, Pyrotechnics. Crown of Madness. That feels like that might be within the realm of what we're looking at. Crown of Madness. Let's look at Crown of Madness. Because um, mm -hmm. clerics don't get it. That's one of the things. Um, yep. Yeah, that could be fun. Uh, Crown of Madness... Darkness, dark vision, detect thoughts, dragon's breath, earthbound, enth uh, enthrall. What the fuck is enthrall? Maybe. Do? I was looking at. I was looking at <coughs> I scrolled past it now. What was I looking? Uh, I've gone past it again. What was I looking? At? God damn it. Scorching Ray. Um, I feel like 
Fire Spell. Scorching Ray and Flaming Sphere if we're going to go for a Fire Spell. Suggestion? Those are... Yeah, maybe. Again, just because we're doing a lot of, um... Kind of... We're doing we're doing some manipulation and some frightening things. Yeah. Uh, devils don't lie. So we could do Zone of Truth. Maybe. That's kind of all I've really got for flavory things that kind of fit what we're doing. Um, yeah, no, whatever whatever strange idea I had in my brain is gone. Let's do Crown of Madness. Crown of Madness? Okay. Um, and then, yeah, and then let's maybe do like a damaging one as well. Okay. So I think either Scorching Ray or... Um, Flame, flaming sphere. Uh, let's do Scorching Ray. Because we're... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's fair. Uh, now we need to do third level spells. Fear. Fear. Oops. Those are my clerics. Um... Yeah, like fear, fear, absolutely. So we're like we're doing fear, absolutely. Um, I am genuinely yeah. not as set on fireball as I was previously. Yeah, I feel like we're moving, we're, we're away, moving away from, from that. that. Yeah. Enemies abound. Like, what the fuck is enemies abound? You reach into the mind of one creature you can see and force it to make an intelligent saving throw. A creature automatically succeeds if it's immune to being frightened. On a failed save, the target loses the ability to distinguish friend from foe. Regarding all creatures it can see as enemies until the spell ends. Uh, each time the target takes damage, it can repeat the saving throw, uh, ending the effect itself with success. Whenever the affected creature chooses another creature as an attack target, it can choose a target at random from among the creatures it can see within the range of the attack, spell, or ability it's using. If an enemy provokes an opportunity attack from the affected creature, the creature must make that attack if it is able to. So it's kind of a. It's not bad. It's not bad, and it very much fits our vibe. I mean, is almost exactly the kind of thing that we're doing. Yeah, so I'm like, except we get yeah, control with our thing. Uh, yeah. Let's have, a quick, yeah, let's have yeah. a quick look, see if there's anything that fits better, but if we can't find anything, then enemies abound. Mm. Uh, oh, Incite Greed would be a... Would be so fitting. Just tempt. That would be fun. Tempt them in. Although, mm. it's an Acquisitions Incorporated spell, so... Eh. Uh, and second, the clouds well, get we, it. Yeah, I'm like. Otherwise, we're sh we're suffer doing something like summon lesser demons. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. Nah, I like enemies. Two enemies abound. I like yeah. enemies abound. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. It's a spell I'd never heard of before. It's an interesting one because it, it's not like directly powerful, but it very much fits our flavor. Yeah. So the Xanathars. Yeah. Nice. So what should we do for our sixth level ability? Oh fuck, we didn't decide one. No, did we, we didn't. Uh, Shit. We were going to do. The, oh. We were going to do the spells and come up with something later, but I genuinely didn't think the spells would take that short amount of time. God damn it! We were just so we were just like yes, perfect. Asmodeus, damn it! Um, what am I doing? Um, Mammon's balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, like, this cleric, just this cleric, in, just this cleric cursing and making an invocation. Goes by Mammon's mighty mammaries. <laughs> immediately smoke. I. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <sighs> well, by be <laughs> by Belial's bifurcated balls. <laughs> wow. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Um. Uh, so we've done we've done a lot of fear stuff. We're doing a lot of scares. Um, yeah. Should we do a big scare thing, or should we do like some other kind of debilitating thing? Or should this? Hmm. Well. There is a like the the death domain does let you overcome necromancy resistance. Yeah. So we can maybe do 
you can now affect creatures that are immune to the fear condition, to immune to the frightened condition. Uh, you can now frighten creatures that are immune to the frightened condition. However, if a creature had immunity, it has advantage on the saving throw. That's very fair and very balanced. I want to add something else to that. Yeah, that's why I'm like... Uh... That's, that's, that's weak sauce compared to all the stuff we saw. Play yeah, exactly! Clerics. Hey, play more clerics, guys. Uh, I believe the joke that Joe Cat made was, yeah, you could make a party of purely priests call her the Amen, and they, and they would bust down Tiamat's door and she would build herself a toilet to give herself a swirly to save herself from all the fucking... Yeah, it's mental. Fuck yeah. Clerics, oh, man. someone was not paying attention when the designer, whatever designer it was that did a lot of the, the cleric stuff at the PHB was just like, hee 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 hee. Oh man, I need to go back and rewatch the crap guides, man. Yeah. Um, so right, good. let's... The DM one still makes me cry. It's beautiful. Um, now, my question for you is, do we want to, at sixth level... Basically, kind of piece out the sphere thing, and then like seventeenth level spells for all of our devils. See, um, this is the thing. Looking at this ability, if we are, if we introduce the like bypassing immunity to fear at seventeenth level, that means that's fifteen levels where players are like. I have all this fear ability. Oh no, I've come up against a creature that is immune to fear. What do I do? <laughs> I mean, set them on fire. Well, that's but... why I'm wondering if in the early stage we give we put an an extra thing in the pot. So we give so we say here that they can buy we can bypass frighten immunity and I was thinking more that we Ignore frightened immunity for now, and we just handle. Actually, no. Yeah, yeah let's just bypass yeah, frightened immunity. We, Fuck it. Let's thing, do it. If, if so, the ability will be useful forever. Yeah, we're great. Because it means because um, that was one of the things that I really didn't like about the new ranger, is that it gives you they give you an ability. I think at 18th level, that's to do with hunter's mark. That is like I remember reading it and going, that should be a third level ability. Yeah, no, that's fair. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking? Oh yeah, it's you can't lose concentration on Hunter's Mark at eighteenth level. That's cool. Yeah, but that at eighteenth level. <laughs> yeah, that's fuck. That's a bit off. There are people throwing holes in reality at you. Yeah. I was like, oh no, I can yeah. I can focus good. Literally one feet, and you're pretty much fine anyway. True. Or fucking. Two levels or whatever into um, s uh, singing, blade singer, spell singer, blade singer. or two levels yeah. into warlock because they get um, the uh, the, uh, the eldritch mind. Oh, yeah, they get an invocation. They get yeah. an invocation. That means they don't lose concentration. <laughs> yeah. Um. Right. So we're gonna ignore it. fear. Yep. Fear. Fear is the mind killer. Yep. Uh. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings destruction. I've not seen Dune. Um, <laughs> the original is is a head fuck. I've not seen the new ones. Um, I've only one. seen only seen the only nightmare seen the porn as the original. I've only seen the David Lynch one. Yeah, um, I can't. Yeah, the David Lynch one. one. I can't be bothered with the new ones. <laughs> I really just can't. I snug up the spoons. I, yeah, um, I, I don't have I don't have it in me to watch really wanky sci-fi, and Dune is quite wanky, famously so. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, um, I think David Lynch probably made it more wanky because it's David Lynch. Yeah, he's, yeah, but he did it in a way that was utterly fucking surreal. Yes, that is his way. Yeah. Um. Uh, if we bypass fear. Yep. Immunities. You can bypass the creatures' immunities what, in frightened condition. What if we do? What if we do what you had said? What did I say? We we buff our minion. Oh yeah. We add psychic damage to their attacks. Ah, right. Uh, Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> See, <laughs> we could do that. 
Yeah. We could also do a little fun thing where it's like, hey, your summoned creature also gets a resistance to psychic damage. So they die slower. No, no I don't uh, think, yeah, I think they should still die just as fast. Yeah, because, yeah, having a devil in your head isn't fun. Um, no. But they should kill people faster too. Uh, gnashing of teeth. Uh, do an extra. I'm gonna say one d8 at this level. Sure. I was gonna uh, say d6, so I'm happy with d8. Uh, do an extra one d6 psychic damage. Uh, with their attacks while. Yeah. 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 Do an extra psych one d6 psychic damage with their attacks. Yes. Because that also means that, you know, if, if you've taken control of something that's got multi-attack, each attack can do an extra d6 psychic. Yeah, which is going to be fucking scary. <laughs> Absolutely. It's going to be delightful. Yeah, because if we do that, this now allows the channel divinity and weeping and wailing to scale as you level up, which is a really important thing in a class, especially one with the gulf that is, realistically, you're not getting an extra ability between... 8th level and 17th. And between 6th and 17th, because the 8th level ability is always either Divine Strike or Potent Cantrip. Every single time. Bar, I think, maybe 1 or 2. Potent Spellcasting. Yeah, potent damn, spell they casting, are. Potent Spellcasting. <laughs> divine Strike. Divine Strike. Divine Strike. Uh, divine Strike. Potent spellcasting, divine strike. That's just the cleric base page. Yeah, that's fair. And we're we're getting potent spellcasting. Yes, I think we are. <laughs> um. So what should we? What should Although we, we could do something slightly different with it. No, no, because it's cantrips. No, we'll just we'll we'll do potent spellcasting. That's fine. I was going to say we can um, subtract your wisdom modifier from um, uh, <laughs> well, from uh, somebody's saving throw. Yeah, because that's the thing. Is that would be that would be mental powerful. That would be. Um, well, we'll we'll save that. We'll save that for, for later. Uh, just gonna even that out a bit, uh, and I am literally just going to control C, control V that out of the um, the grave domain. Um, yeah, the wisdom modifier to any damage you deal with any cleric cantrip. Uh, yeah. And alright. 14th, so 17th level. Right, no, hang on. We need to do the 7th level and then 9th level spells. So, 4th and 5th yes. level spells. <clears throat> yeah. So, 4th level spells. 4th level spells are always weird, because there's a lot of good... There's good and interesting stuff in here. It sort of a, it feels a bit... Mm. Kind of, yeah. Charm monster. Confusion. Banishment. Banishment. Um, Fuck off back to your own plane. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh... Dominate beast might be more appropriate. Dominate beast, maybe. Um, hallucinatory terrain. Uh, oh, fuck this. Fuck is spirit of death. I scrolled right past that. Thing. You call forth a spirit that embodies death. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> spirit manifests in unlikely. Yeah, you summon. You summon a reaper, basically. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not too bad, actually. Um, it's got a base AC of 15, but that casts with uh, that increases with upcasting. Hit points also increase with upcasting. It's got 30 foot fly speed, immunity to necrotic and poison damage, as well as charmed, exhaustion, frightened, paralyzed, and poisoned. It's got 16s across the board. Um. It can move through objects like it's a thing. Makes a number attack equal to half the spell level, so base of two. Uh, and it always has advantage on its attacks. 
Wait, what's the spell called? Uh, Spirit of Death. I don't have it in my little app. What's, what's it's from it? the Book what's of Many the... Things, which would be one. Ah, that's why. Which is one of the, like, the, later, okay. is the latest thing. Yeah. Um... Because I'm looking at Phantasmal Killer. Ooh, Phantasmal Killer! Phantasmal Killer's fun! Yeah. It's, ba it's kind of just like a... It's kind of a... Eh, I was going to say it's kind of a beefed up hex, but it's not. It's just fucking melt someone's brain. Yeah. Um, so and Fear. Fear's a third level spell. No, no, it's got Fear in it. Oh, shit! Phantasmal Killer. They become frightened and they take a fuck ton of damage. Oh yeah, we're doing Phantasmal Killer then. Phantasmal Killer's absolutely on the fucking board. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like... Yeah. Dominate... I'm not really... I'm not sure about Dominate Beast. I'm not sure not either. Yeah. Um, I got... always like banishment, though. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Banishment is absurdly powerful anyway. Yeah. There is part of me that also is like, I should maybe give them like a more solid damage option. Maybe give them Blight. I mean... <clears throat> blight hurts. Blight does hurt. Blight is awesome. Um, I remember the first time I saw anyone use Blight, Vary used it on a Shambling Mound, which meant it took double. Yeah, it just disappears. Was... Yeah, uh, it, it, it eviscerates. I just great. I'm, I feel annoyed that there's only Summon Greater Demon... You can't summon, yeah. You can't summon a devil. Can I, any aberration, what? any construct, or. I mean. How many devils are about opulence? Why not take your. Why not take your. Your. Spirit. Murder creature one. Spirit of death? Yeah. Yeah, Spirit of Death. Fuck it. Yeah. Phantasmal Killer and Spirit Why of not? Death. That sounds pretty emo as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the goddess of death. What were you the god of again? Immediately gets struck by lightning. Uh, <laughs> now we need fifth level. Fifth level is where things get real juicy. Yup. So. Got a lot of available Cloud things. Kill. Cloud Sorry. kill. Fuck. Cloud kill, also known as war crime. Yeah. I can't. I can't remember who it was that was asking me how to make mustard gas in D and D, and I just said, "There's a spell for that. It's called cloud kill." It was Flav. It was <laughs> you Flav. Want a war crime? There's a spell for that. It, Flav asked me, and I just went, "You don't need to come up with anything clever. It, the spell is called cloud kill." <laughs> yeah. Uh, it even says that it's a sphere of poisonous yellow green fog. Yeah. It, some of the. What are, some designer literally just went, hey man, what can we how can we just do magical mustard gas? Yeah. We know that everyone who plays D and gets to this level is a degenerate fuck, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, dominate person. It's a solid one. Yeah. Uh, oh god, immolation if we want to be fucking evil. <sighs> horrible way to die basically you know heat metal yes it's that with without the metal and a big upfront damage you literally just hey! look at, you literally just look at somebody and set them on fire for a minute how about um <gasps> infernal calling i've just seen infernal calling uh, Uttering a dark incantation you summon a devil from the nine hells hell choose the devil's okay. type must be as a CR six or lower. Um, the devil disappears, but it drops zero hit points. It is unfriendly towards you and your companions. <laughs> uh, 
it's it's under the dungeon master's control act on its own nature in each of its turns. Uh, especially the deary me. Uh, on each of its turns, it, you can try and issue a verbal command to the devil. No action required. It obeys the command if the likely outcome is in accordance with its desires, especially if the result would draw you towards evil. Otherwise, you can make a deception, intimidation, or persuasion check contested by its insight. We've given these people proficiency in deception and persuasion. Yes, we have! Infernal Let's do it! calling! <laughs> oh, I love that. That's I especially love terrifying. that like, you summon it and you're like negotiating with it every time for it to do what, it, what you want it to do. Uh, you make the check with advantage if you say the devil's true name. If your check fails, the devil becomes immune to your verbal commands for the duration of the spell, though it can still carry out your commands. Uh, if it chooses, if your check succeeds, the devil carries out your commands, such as attack my enemies, explore the room ahead, or bear this message to the queen, until it completes the activity, at which point it returns to your to report having done so. If your concentration ends before the spell reaches its full duration, the devil doesn't disappear uh, if it has become immune to your verbal commands. Instead, it acts in whatever manner it chooses for 3d6 minutes, then it disappears. <laughs> If you possess an individual devil tal devil's talisman, you can summon that devil if it is of appropriate challenge rating plus one, and it obeys all your commands with no charisma checks required. Fuck yes, we are on that shit. 110%. That's amazing. And that's a lesser known spell. Nobody, I've never seen anyone use that. That's amazing. Neither. That's cool as fuck. Yeah, let's fucking keep that one. Hell yeah, baby. Uh, summon Celestial? No. Um... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Wall of Fire is a fourth level spell. Um, so we are past that. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, dominate person or immolation. Fair. I'm just having a kind of further we look see. Um, but I think you are. Yeah. No, I think you're. I am gonna say. Dominate person over yeah. immolation. Dominate person fits our vibe very much. Yeah, I think um, so. Yeah, it's just that immolation is a horrible, fiery way to die <laughs> that only sorcerers yeah. can do. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, flames wreathe one creature you can see within range. Make a deck saving throw. It takes 76 fire damage or half on a success. Uh, on a fail save, it also burns for the spell's duration, which is concentration for a minute. Uh, the burning target sh sheds bright light. In 30 30. Uh, and at the end of each of its turn, it repeats the saving throw. It takes 3d6 on a failed save, and the spell ends on a successful one. These magical flames can't be extinguished through non magical means. Uh, if uh, if damage from the spell reduces a target to zero hit points, the target is turned to ash. It's a horrible way to die. Yeah. Especially since if you're turned to ash, you ain't getting revivified. You fucked. You yeah, dead. there's not really. Like, you kind of need a ninth level spell at that point. Yeah. Because it's like that. I think that's the. Old, I think. I think even reincarnate. You need a bit of somebody. Yeah. And I'm like, given. Yeah. I'm like, nah. You fuck. Nah, fuck. That's no. true. That's res. You need excellent. true resurrection, which is a ninth level spell. So yeah, dominate person and infernal call like because fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is yeah. Remember how we made the love cleric and we were like, yeah, this is fun. This is cool. This is the other side. This is the hate cleric. <laughs> They love their job. They probably do, and that's a problem. <laughs> right. Seventeenth level. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I want you, while I'm sort of typing this up, to yep. get me a description of each layer of the Nine Hells of Bator. You got it, boss. Uh. 17th level you gain the power to invoke, invoke the very essence of of the nine hells of is it two a is it two a's in Bator? i think it's two a's uh, i it doesn't actually say here you yeah. know that does not say Bator anywhere. Well, oh no, here it does. Two A's. Yeah, be a, the Bator. first devil in the hierarchy of Bator. There we go. Yeah, not, it, that's that's the proper name for the nine hells. Nice. It's Bator. Bah. 
It's just all shit. Uh, so, do we want to do an individual ability, or do we give them an extra spell? Uh, I feel like... Well, let's look at them. I like the idea of spells because it's easier, and we don't have to come up with anything. And we have only got 15 minutes left. Yeah. So, what we're going to so do... Spells is quicker. If we do spells, what mm -hmm. we should do <clears throat> is, like, okay... Using this ability, you can cast each of these spells once, and you regain all uses on a long rest. Yeah, that works for me. You can cast each of these spells once without consuming a spell slot. <clears throat> okay. All right. Now, you want the descriptions of the lair or the person who's in charge of it? The lair. Because that, I think, okay. will be easier to theme. Yeah. Because uh, I, I know there's Avernus, the Eternal Battlefield, the Iron City of Dis, um, and then I, I get a bit confused as I go down. I know Mephil Mephistopheles' whole thing is vaults and, like, concealed stuff. Um, Well, let's start with Avernus then. Uh, the most likely beachhead of any attack by demon kind is the primary battleground of the Blood War. Um, Invasion that sailed the river Styx in. Avernus is the largest layer of battle, one of the most traditionally infernal, a blasted hellscape in the most literal sense, filled with rivers of lava, barren hills, and low rocky mountains as far as the eye can see. Um, mountains made of obsidian and quartz um, for jutting land, cutting clothes and slicing flesh. Ubiquitous boulders and rocks. And some of which seem to resemble tormented faces. So, yeah. Started with tar pits and quicksand. Avernus, so, Avernus is eternal battle, so Avernus should either yeah. be a spell that makes people fight each other or just something that fucking hits hard. <clears throat> Potentially in a fiery fashion. Potentially, probably in a fiery fashion, let's be real. Um, yeah. Excuse me while I go look at the really high level spells. See, I'm... I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna say we're gonna say... I'm gonna restrict this to 7th and below. Alright. Because, other <clears throat> because otherwise... <clears throat> We're giving people free casts of like eighth and ninth level spells, and that's that's not okay. Even to be honest, even at seventh level. Seventeenth level. At seventeenth level, you have one seventh. I think you have one seventh level, one eighth level, and one ninth level spell slot. Fair enough. So even if we're giving people like free casts of seventh level and below spells, that's fucking mental. Like yeah, this, this is crazy. absurdly powerful, and I would maybe say Firestorm. Firestorm's a solid choice. Firestorm's a solid choice. Um, Force cages. Uh, uh, finger of death. Investiture of flame, maybe if you want to do like maybe a little more more supportive thing. I think. Uh, well, oh no, investor, war, I suppose, Oh no, investiture of flame. You can only cast on yourself. Oh, then no. Um. I mean, to be fair, it does give you the ability to basically create a wall of fire wherever you want. Pretty cool. For a minute. Ten minutes. Mm -hmm. You know what? Tell you what. What? Should we just give him Summon Fiend? The battlefield of Avernus always needs more soldiers. Summon Fiend restricted. That's Avernus. a solid point. Yeah. Summon Fiend, Devil only. Because you can choose Demon, Devil, or Yugoloth. It's a sixth level spell. Yeah. Absolutely. You can only summon Devil. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. Now, next is Dis, the Iron City of Dis. Indeed, almost in cover entirely covered by the city of the same name that stood in a valley surrounded by a ring of spiked mountains. 
So, despite being potentially infinite, the city of Dis always felt crowded and oppressive to anyone inside. The entire city was made of red hot iron, every wall and cobblestone burning to the touch. Material exuded a column of smoke, constantly shrouded the lair in a dark. Interesting. And it an infinite city. Of okay. Pain and nightmare. Okay, I mean there's one choice for this and it's heat metal but upcast. Okay. I'm sorry, the iron the burning iron city? Come on. Yeah, alright. Alright, alright, alright. I was hoping there might be something like fun and urban, but sure. Uh, I don't I don't want to use any of the like um urban spells. Heat metal, should no, we say it's fifth level? Well at sixth. Yeah. Given what we're doing. I've just realized that thematically what we could have done would have been really cool is if we'd done a first level spell for Avernus and then gone all the way up to a ninth. But I think that would have been cool. I as think fun, that's too but... insane. It because... might, I think it may be too much effort. Too much effort, but um, also, you know. Um, maybe next time. But also, you know, that's a free ninth level spell, which is always fucking mental. And to be honest, you know, it would be a ninth level spell to represent Asmodeus, so it probably would be. Power Word Kill. Probably Power Word Kill, or like Meteor Swarm or something. Yeah, probably. Just, I cast no. <laughs> <laughs> I cast no. Absolutely. <laughs> I like the idea, but I've just cast no. Well, next one we have quite an interesting one, Here we go. which is Mineros, the third level of the ninth hells. How do you spell that? Ruled, yeah. ruled by Mammon. How do you spell that? M, M I N, A U R O, S. Damn it! Almost had it. Mineros. Mineros, indeed. Uh, Ruled by the Archdevil Mammon, the Endless Bog uh -oh. was the economic centre of the Nine Hells. <laughs> you imagine the Bog of Eternal Stench, our economic centre. I mean, have you ever been to the Stock it's Exchange? It's London, everybody! I was going to say, have you been to the, to the Stock Exchange? Apparently um, so. Where new souls were processed and minted. Uh, its great wealth belied so by its course. ramshackle appearance. And unenjoyed by the vast majority. Sus. It's literally rich for the, riches for the few, while everybody around you lives in a fucking shitey stank bog. What does that sound like to you? Sounds like spike growth, to be honest, but it seems a <laughs> I little. That would be really funny. Seems a little tame for this level of ability, because spike growth doesn't mm, I mean, upcast. I don't believe. I'm sure. It up Let's have a look. On upcast? Hope it upcast, because it's fucking great. I mean, to be fair, Spike... Yeah, Spike Growth does not upcast. To be fair, Damn. Chris, if Spike Growth did upcast, could you imagine how fucking horrifying it would be? Oh, it would be so fucking dangerous. Like, if there was, an extra, if there was an extra D4 per spell level. It's just a second it would be, level it spell. Would, the most ungodly powerful spell. Yeah. Um, What about something... What do we have in terms of, like, Blight or Contagion type spells? We have Blight and we have Contagion. Okay, what level is Contagion? Uh... Find me Contagion! Fifth level. Okay! <laughs> it's like, what do we have in terms of Blight and Contagion? Well, we've got Blight, we have we've blight got and Contagion. contagion. <laughs> uh, you touch, your touch inflicts de disease. It's an action and it lasts seven days. Make a melee spell attack against a creature within your reach. On a hit, the target is poisoned. At the end of each of the poison targets turns, it must make a con save. If the target succeeds on three of these saves, it's no longer poisoned and the spell ends. If the target fails three of these saves, the target is no longer poisoned, but chooses but choose one of the diseases below. The target is subjected to the chosen disease. Blinding to... sickness, filth fever, flesh rot, mind fire, seizures, <laughs> epilepsy, everybody. It's a demonic condition. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just... It's the, it's the possession. You gotta get the demons out. You know what? Yeah, contagion. Yeah, contagion. Contagion. Fucking Fuck absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay, what's the next one? The next one is Phlegathos. P H L E. I've got it. G E. You got it? Yeah, because I've I've done Delightful. the Greek. Because that's that is just the river Phlegathon, but with an S at the end yeah. instead of an N. Yeah, pretty much. I, ruled I, by the archdevils Belial and 
Fierna. Yep. It's the centre of the Nine Hells judicial system. Yep. Lots of devils shady. and mortals are like are navigated through the intricate like legalities of battle. Oh God. If <laughs> you're a cruel <laughs> woman, Quinn. To set to the set liars, the liars on, on us. Right, we need Fuck something. Fuck's sake. Right, we need Do something. we have anything? Do we have anything legal? None of this is legal. <laughs> None of this is legal, Chris. Um, I think we need Just... another control spell, like a mind control thing. Yeah, that sounds that um, sounds kind of vaguely in in the. Tell you what, looking at fifth level in the kind of monster, wheelhouse. Hold monster might be a good idea. Mm. You are bound by the chains of law. I know. I'm like contingency. Um. Well, me. <laughs> Find the path divination spell. Where the fuck am I going? Yeah, less less good than I was hoping it'd be like moral. Forbiddance. Oh, uh, that feels like it's might be good. You create a ward against magical travel that protects up to forty thousand square feet of floor space, to a height of thirty feet above the floor. For the duration, creatures can't teleport into the area or use portals such as those created by the gate spell or enter the area. Shit. Spell proofs the area against planar travel and therefore prevents creatures from accessing the air, air by the way of the astral plane, ethereal plane, Feywild, Shadowfell, or the plane shift spell. In addition, spell damages types of creatures you choose uh, when you cast it. Choose one or more of the following: Celestials, Elementals, uh, Fiends, Fey, Fiends Dead. Dead. When a chosen creature enters the spell, uh, it takes five d ten radiant and necrotic. Uh, when you cast the spell, you designate a password. Uh, spells can't overlap with another Forbiddance, and if you cast Forbiddance 30 days in the same spell, it, uh, it just lasts. Um, I mean, it's that's already a Cleric spell. It's, a cler it's an already a 10 minute Cleric ritual spell. Yeah. There's another 10 minute ritual, because 10 minute rituals are good, but this one Clerics don't have, which would be um, Guards and Wards. Ooh, Guards and Wards. Protect 2,500 square feet of floor space. Um, uh, the wards area can be up to 20 feet tall, shaped as you desire. Yep. You can ward several stories of a stronghold by dividing the area among them, as long as you can walk into each contiguous area while you're casting the spell. So it doesn't need to be a circle. It can be whatever you like. Yeah, so you can basically <clears throat> make a prison or, a, or like a, a, a binding place with it. So yeah, I like guards and wards. Yep. And it has corridors, doors, stairs, and um, other spell effects. And you can place your choice of d delightful dancing lights, magic mouth, stinking clouds in two locations. You can put traps in it. This is basically build labyrinth. This is yeah. This is this is build minor labyrinth. That's delightful. Yeah, Flagathos gets guards and wards. Winning. Yep. Okay. What's <clears> next? <throat> Next up, we have Stygia. Stygia. The fifth level of the Nine Waste of the Nine Hells, sorry, ruled by Levistus. It is the Frozen Wastes. Instead, the untamed expanse was the Great Sea, proving ground environmental of cruel coal. So big coal. I mean, you know, cone of cold is the obvious choice. Um, because it's so unless important. we have something yeah. more exciting. Unless we find something more exciting, like Cone of Cold is the obvious choice. Um, I mean, there's always Wall of Ice. Wall of Ice, that's true. Um, yeah. Actually, Wall of Ice makes more sense because Levistus is imprisoned there. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do Wall of Ice then. Big, big shiny sixth level spell. Yeah, Wall of Ice. Fuck yeah. For the fifth layer. Delightful. Because, yeah, like like most of the Archdevils, Levistus tried to overthrow Asmodeus and then got frozen up to his nips uh, for his troubles. He basically it's stands as a giant popsicle in the middle of Stygia. That's why the Tomb of Levistus Warlock invocation completely freezes you. Ah, that makes sense. Why it's called the Tomb of Levistus. <clears throat> See? Knowledge makes sense. of things that don't fucking matter. I... I'm s Jay, yeah. you're not the one who read a book and went, oh, I know what opera they've just walked into. 
in this crime book. You're fine. Um, are you ready for the sixth layer of hell? Sure. Britain. Bad bulge. <laughs> Alright, is it Malibulge or is it Malbulge? It's just Malbulge. <clears throat> okay. Where the bulges live. Where the bulges live. Also <laughs> run by Glacia. As in, I'm going to eat Glacia. Glacia. The tyranny of turmoil. Asmodeus's daughter, apparently. Oh, that's who oh, Asmodeus' daughters were. I thought it was Fiona. Uh, it was the prison of the Nine Hills. The devil's found guilty of breaking the law. Underwent to your supervision. Yeah, no, Asmodeus' daughter. So, yeah. Um, Glacia. Nobody knows who the mum is. Um, I know that much. What? Fair. Um, Malbos was described as one seemingly endless, infinitely large slope. As if it were the sides of an impossible, impossible massive mountain. That should read impossibly massive mountain. Forgotten Realms wiki. Boulders and other debris would rain down from its heights in deadly and deafening landslides. Rock falls well, in. if you wanted earthquake, because it rocks fall, everybody dies. Earthquake is already a, is an eighth level spell that clerics can already cast. All right. And I do not. I really don't well, want to do, do eight. I do really, really do not want to give someone a free eight level spell, especially one, especially one like earthquake that is essentially it's another one that just says delete city. Yes, no, that's fair. Well, let's look. Um, let's look for rocks fall and if everybody dies. Uh, okay. What have we got for rocks fall? Everybody dies. Not a lot. The amount of earth spells are not actually very. Uh, there's not a lot of them. Hmm. Move Earth is a sixth level spell. Is it? Yeah. Move Earth. As oh, move Earth. move Earth. Okay. Yeah, no move, move Earth. Earth. As in, that Earth be dancing. It's got some moves. It's getting funky. Uh, Absolutely. Move Earth. Where are we going to move Earth? Choose an area of terrain no larger than 40 feet. Uh, you can reshape dirt, sand, or clay in the area in any manner you choose the duration. You can raise or lower the area's elevation, create a fill trench, erect or flatten a wall, or form a pillar. You extend The extent of any such changes can't exceed half. Either that or yeah. investiture of stone. Again, that's one of those ones that only you can only cast on yourself. The investitures are cool, though. Yeah, you do are. get the power to create small earthquakes for fun. Yes, which is fun. And you get to move through Earth as if it was air. So, yeah, yeah, maybe. Or flesh. There's also. Stone. I was going to say uh, bones of Earth. Bones of the Earth is not very good. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a cleric it spell. Just create, cool, it's, a, it's a druid spell. It just creates a bunch of pillars. Hmm. <laughs> But you could make them under people. You can. You can. All right. What What are you feeling? Uh, probably move Earth. You don't sound happy, though. I'm not really sounding happy about any of these, to be honest. <laughs> because we're giving too much, or why? No, no, just because it, it doesn't feel like anything really fits like it's hard to find a spell that fits this kind of thing yeah i feel yeah we have we have made a rod for our own backs here Aye, because to be honest like you know earthquake or uh, arguably maybe even maze would be a good one for this um, yeah but yeah oh actually um okay should we maybe stretch it? No, I was gonna say. Should we maybe stretch it a little bit and say reverse gravity? Could do. That sounds fun. Reverse gravity is a real fucking powerful. Basically, you create a hundred. You create like I think it's like a one hundred or a ninety foot tall pillar of inverted gravity for a minute. That sounds kind of bitch. It's really powerful. It's a seventh level druid spell. Let's do it. Uh, the spell reverses gravity in a 50 foot radius, 100 foot high cylinder. Uh, centered on a point within range. Fuck yeah. Okay, we're bending the, we're bending the little rule 
Only once, so we're gonna do... For the sake of for fun! Our, for, the, for the sake of fun and uh, finding something that fits, because god damn it, D&D, you need more earth spells. Yes, yes, they do. Like, D &D, we need more higher level earth and wind spells. Yeah. So, after the bad bulge... Uh, we have the even worse uh, Dominion. Maladomini! Home of Big Slug! Right, how do you fuck do you spell that one? Mala Domini. Exactly as it sounds. M A L A D O M I N E? I. I. Domini. Domini. Not Domine. Yeah, not Domine. Domini, Domine. Domini, Domine. Domine. Uh, right, what's the what's the fucking deal with this place? What do you mean, Big Slug? Uh, Beelzebub. Um, no, he's apparently he's a Big Slug Boy. Oh, he's a, oh. He's not the Lord see, of Flies. This one is yeah. This one is the Slug Boy, not the not the Fly Boy. Yeah, the Fly Boy is in Christianity. The Slug Boy is in D and D. Get your get it right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> one accused the other of having demons in it. For Jesus yet. I know. <laughs> Um, so, let's have a look. It is described as the Circle of Ruins. Um, like the higher layer of Minerus, Maladomini is a reeking filth of ridden mire, where the corruptive, toxic and pestilent was empowered, while forces of health and vigour were weakened. So badly written. It was a druid's worst nightmare. <laughs> so badly written. A world where all things natural were defaced and destroyed. The lair itself was like a wounded animal, constantly shuddering, moaning, and oozing. A foul black ichor. Or ichor, if people are fucking weird. Clinging oh. hopelessly to life in a state of perpetual dying. Do you know what the most annoying thing is? What? I think there is a spell that fits this really, really well. What? It's eighth level. Mm -hmm. Abidalzim's horrid wilting. Do it. Basically, Do you it. just suck all the moisture out of out of everyone in a thirty foot cube. That sounds pretty fucking fucking grim, horrible. To be fair. Yeah, ten d nope. ten d eight necrotic on a failed save. Failing that, cloud kill. I think cloud kill fits this pretty fucking well. Yeah, I take cloud kill. And Cloud Kill doesn't break our rules because it's a fifth level spell. Yay! Yay! Mustard gas! Whoop, whoop! Okay. Nobody clip that. <laughs> Nobody clip that. Yeah. Alright, what's eighth? Eighth. Ruled by the fabulous, your friend and my friend, Mephistopheles. Mephistopheles. Um, is. Oh, fucking. Don't do that to me. Mephistopheles, famed for being the only creature to break out of D&D and into Marvel. Yup. Um, and... What? What? Why is that? Why can... No! I, I, I clicked the wrong thing and now it wouldn't let me go back. And I don't know why. Ooh. Okay. Well, the answer is Cania. As in, you can't you shove your granny out of a bus? That's the one! Exactly. A relentless realm of, guess what, Jay? It's more cold. More cold? Seemingly living cold, specifically. Mm. This cold's alive. Oh, okay. Okay. We can do something with that. The lair was marked by moving glaciers and icebergs that drifted as fast as a running person. Constantly colliding with one another with and with surrounding mountains of enormous sizes. Snow avalanches were common and violent. The weather was dominated by snowstorms that howled with incessant winds. Thin layers of accumulated snow often hid deep crevasses that would engulf incautious explorers. I am so annoyed that there is no way to summon an ice elemental because that would be perfect for this. That would be awesome! That would be awesome, but I've just checked Summon Elemental. It's only air, earth, water, or fire. There's no way. You can't summon Ice Elementals. There are stat blocks for Ice Elementals. But you can't have them. You can't have one. Fuck. 
Uh, pants. Ah, oh, because that would have been so good. Like a perfect living frost. Um, yeah. Whirlwind? Investiture of ice. I'm going to make the case for Whirlwind as Howling Frozen Winds uh, yeah, it works of for me. massive size. We didn't do one of the, you know, we didn't do one of the investigators, thank God. Um, nope, we haven't. Uh, I mean, I like Whirlwind, I'm not going to lie. I do like Whirlwind. What is that, fifth level? Seventh. Ooh. We've already done you said one. Seventh was the limit. We've done. We've already done one seventh level spell. I don't want to do too many. Uh, we're not doing too many. We're doing if two. we've done one, this will be two. Yeah. A whirlwind howls down a point. Uh, Thirty ten foot radius. Thirty foot high cylinder. Um, deck save or take ten d six bludgeoning. Um, or you know, strength save will be restrained. Uh, Pulled five, constantly pulled five feet higher and higher and higher. Both of our seventh level spells are are going to end up being about dropping people off of very high things. I have no issue. This is a seventeenth level character. Yeah, yeah. I think Investiture of Ice fits the flavor better. Okay. Because Investiture of Ice, you're immune to cold damage and resistant to fire damage. You move across difficult terrain, create a bit of ice or snow without spending extra movement. The ground at a 10-foot radius around you is icy and difficult terrain for creatures other than you. The radius moves with you. You can use your action to create a 15-foot cone of freezing wind extending from your outstretched hand in a direction you choose. Each creature in the cone must make a constitution saving throw or take 4d6 cold damage on a failed save or half as much as a successful save. A creature that fails its save has its speed halved until the start of your next turn. And you start that as an action and you can do it for 10 minutes. I will grant you that that is significantly more uh, appropriate. Yeah. Yes. I think it's a sixth level spell. Yeah. Investiture of ice. And now finally we have the bottom of the nine hells of Beato. When Asmodeus lives and is trapped. Indeed. So I think we should give it. Indeed. I think we should create. I think we should do force cage. <laughs> I mean. That's a solid option. I was going to suggest sim well, give, simulacrum. Give us the well. Give us the give us the spiel. Give us the, the flavor. So, is there any Asmodeus? Asmodeus is the Lord of Nessus. The lair was a featureless plain with jagged edges that extended two thousand five hundred miles from east to west and 1,100 miles from north to south, floating in an endless red void. The plains were scarred by chasms and ravines several thousand miles deep, and were frequently ravaged by fiery storm winds. The river Styx trickled down into Nessus through a little-known small offshoot. It was heavily guarded by devils who slew any unauthorized visitors on sight. The river drained into a shallow pool as the forgotten land. And then continued at the bottom of some of the crevasses before percolating through the earth and continuing its course into Gehenna. The river Leith also flowed across Nessus occasionally. Oh fuck, Edinburgh's in hell! And ravines. Edinburgh's in yeah, hell. Yeah, Gehenna. Edinburgh's in hell? Oh yeah. The Leith. Yeah, it is. It's at the bottom of a ravine in hell. Right. There's a few things here. We have a couple of options that I found. Yeah. Mental prison. Mm hmm. Soul cage. Yeah. Or force cage. Okay. Because I'm thinking about. Because this. That as far, from what I remember, Nessus was basically shaped to be the prison of Asmodeus. Yeah. There's a reason he doesn't get out much. So. Force Cage is the highest level of those. Force Cage, yeah, is a 7th level evocation uh, that an immobile, invisible, cube-shaped prison composed of magical force springs into existence around an area you choose within range. The prison can be a cage or a solid box as you choose. Uh, 20 feet on a side and made from half an inch diameter bars spaced half an inch apart. Prison in the shape of a box with 10 feet aside, blah, 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 blah. Uh, when you cast a spell, any creature that is completely inside the cage's area is trapped. There's no saving throw. 
Creatures only partially within the area or those too large to fit inside the area are pushed away from the center until they are completely outside. A creature inside the cage can't leave it by non-magical means. If the creature types use teleportation or interplanar travel to leave, it must make a charisma save. Uh, on a success, the creature can use that magic to exit the cage. On a failure, the creature can't exit the cage and wastes the use of the spell or effect. The cage also extends into the ethereal plane, blocking ethereal travel and cannot be dispelled by dispel magic. I... I'm going to suggest that we do that because Soul Cage is pants and doesn't fit with our vibe. No. And Mental Prison is a a charm thing more than it is anything else, which also isn't quite our vibe. Which is a shame because everything it describes is fucking terrifying. I know, right? You might cause the target to perceive itself as being surrounded by fire, floating razors, or hideous maws filled with dripping teeth. Yeah, that's charming. I know, right? But yeah, uh, force cage. Uh, I'm I'm happy to put force cage down. Damn. Well, you know what? We're only 16 minutes over time, minutes and over. we just made our goddamn devil cleric. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the infernal domain cleric. If you want to cause fear in the hearts of your enemies and pluck the very secrets of the nine hells themselves, then fucking give this a try. Uh, I still haven't put the PDFs up on Patreon because you can't actually put PDFs on Patreon and I'm very annoyed about that. Uh, That's weird. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zhuzh them up and put them up as pictures. Cool. Um, so that's going to take a bit of time um, because I am not an artist and I am also very lazy. Uh, so yeah, um, thank you for joining us all uh, in this return to the home brewery and creating... Somehow not the most violent and obscene character uh, um, character class we've ever made. I know, this is relatively tame compared this is, to the, some of the shit we've done. Yeah, this is nothing on the profanity bard. We love the profanity bard. We love bard. the profanity bard. So Fuck good. yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, we are here. Absolutely. We are here every Monday and Friday, except possibly this coming Friday. Um... Because normally that's when I'm doing my chill stream, but I am playing in a D&D one shot that may or may not be streamed. I'm kind of wanting to push towards may not so that everyone has like more time to enjoy themselves. It's a big group. Yeah. Fair, um, fair, fair, fair. Um, and also I think, and also I, the, the person who's going to be running it very much laughs at the Geneva suggestion. Um... Oh, some I know it, which game this is. Yes, some of it will be not for broadcast, but I will be a player. It'll be fun. Um, Absolutely, have a great time. Yeah. Great, the most chaos. I have a few magic items that I still need to add to my character. Um, but yes, uh, we're oh here dear. every Monday night at 7 or 8 o'clock, depending on what we're doing. Um, yeah, usually 8. Usually 8. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can find us on... The internet, uh, all of our previous streams will be, um, which if you're seeing this, you're probably on the channel, uh, The Brothers Honey on YouTube. Um, yep. We are also, uh, I am on Twitter, uh, at JonathanHoney4, as is my games company, uh, Old Alliance Games. We are at Old underscore Games on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, we are doing a whole bunch of interesting stuff every th over there. Stay tuned. Lots of fun shit. Um, and you'll find me at Chris Honey Actor on Instagram, where I monthly update about what I'm up to. I've nearly done like a bunch of things now, yeah. so who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll do something. Who knows? It's all very exciting. Um, so exciting. But yeah, um, failing that, we'll be back here on Monday uh, doing whatever the fuck crosses our mind. Indeed. So. <laughs> Um but otherwise but yeah otherwise bye good night and bye bye bye, bye.